So uh, I wanted to create a video to offer some help with 1.4 number 11 that was requested. Um, so this is the version that, I, that uh, was emailed to me. So f of x equals 6 when x is less than or equal to 2. ax plus b if x is between negative 2 and 4. And then negative 6 if x is greater than or equal to 4. And the task is to find values of a and b so that this uh, function is continuous at all values of x. So notice independently these would all be continuous functions. Um, f of x equals 6, the graph would just be a horizontal line uh, y equals 6. Uh, f of x equals negative 6, same deal, just a horizontal line down at negative 6. And then whatever the values are for a and b, uh, this is also a linear expression. Um, and so this graph would also be a line. So individually each graph has a line which would be continuous at all values of x. The problem uh, that we need to address though is when you change from the graph of say f of x equals x to the graph of f of x equals maybe x plus 4. There could be a jump in that graph. So what needs to happen is we need uh, at f of x equals 6 to come and meet ax plus b at the value negative 2. We need, we need those two uh, graphs to meet. And then again, we need ax plus b uh, to come up and meet the graph of uh, f of x equals negative 6 when x equals 4. Um, so there's potential for a discontinuity. I'll, I'll put it that way. So there are potential, making sure that's on the screen, uh, discontinuities. when x equals negative 2 and when x equals 4. So we need to address each of those individually. So starting with x equals negative 2. So when I say that the graphs need to meet when x equals negative 2, another way to write that is we need the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left to equal the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. And let me draw a picture down here to go along with that. So, oops, that's not a good start. Hold on. Um, so when x is negative 2, uh, we're going to have a, hor uh, yes, a horizontal line up here. And then this ax equals b line. So let's just draw something like this. So what needs to happen is we need the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left to match the limit as you approach from the right. So we need to agree on the y coordinate uh, along each of those graphs when x is equal to negative 2. So that's what I'm writing here. So when x is less than negative 2, when x is less than negative 2, then f of x is equal to 6. When x is greater than negative 2, here, uh, I'll put it here. When x is greater than negative 2, f of x is equal to ax plus b. Because when I say greater than negative 2, we're talking about values like negative 1.9, values close to negative 2. Certainly, really, we're not talking about 5. We're talking about values close to negative 2 but slightly greater. And so uh, for those values of x, you're, the points lie along that ax plus b expression. So as you approach negative 2 from the left through values less than negative 2, we can replace this f of x with 6. So this is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of 6. Well, the limit of a constant is just that constant. Over here, limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right, we can replace f of x. When you approach from the right, that's along that ax plus b graph. OK. Well, so if this is x approaches negative 2 for that linear expression, you evaluate that limit by just plugging in negative 2. a times negative 2 plus b. So 6 equals negative 2a plus b. And I'll just leave it at, at that for now. So I'm going to put a box around that equation just so I remember to come back to it later. 
this is an equation with two unknowns. So we can't find a unique solution for A and B using just one equation if there are two unknowns. What we do is look also at the potential, potential discontinuity at x equals 4. Same general idea. So when x is 4, let's say that's way over here, we need the limit as you approach from the left to match the limit as you approach from the right. So we need the limit as x approaches 4 from the left for this function to agree with the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. Okay, well this time, if you are to the left of 4, so value slightly less than 4, then you're looking at this expression ax plus b. So for x values less than 4, f of x gets replaced with ax plus b. For x values greater than 4, which is what you would consider with this limit as you approach 4 from the right, f of x, for x values greater than 4, f of x is equal to negative 6. So replace f of x on this side with negative 6. And so now, with this limit, you can substitute 4. So this is a times 4. So I'll write that as 4a plus b is equal to, the limit of a constant is just equal to that constant, negative 6. Okay, so there's your other equation. So now, uh, making these one-sided limits match up at negative 2 and at 4, you get two equations with two unknowns. So now we need to solve that system of equations. So this is a different type of question now. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. So you could solve that with substitution, or if you guys remember, there's a, something called the elimination method. I'll use the elimination method yeah, just for the fun of it, something different. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, negative 2a plus b equals 6, and then I'm going to write underneath it, copy the second equation that we came up with, so 4a plus b equals negative 6. And notice that if I take the first equation and, and subtract the second equation from it, this is what's called the elimination method then I'll have b minus b, so the b's will go away. So I'll have negative 2a minus 4a gives me negative 6a, and then b minus b, because this negative would distribute, so the b is gone, and then 6 plus 6, because we're multiplying everything by negative 1 here, so this will be 12. And if you divide both sides by negative 6, then a is equal to negative 2. So now we've solved for a. In order to solve for b, now you could just substitute this value of a into either one of these equations. I'll go for the first one just because it's first there. Uh, so 6 equals negative 2 times a plus b. So 6 equals 4 plus b, so b is equal to 2. And there you go. a is negative 2 and b is 2.